What's the best way to store your Bitcoin? Well, we've got 12 different methods you can use to secure your digital currency. And what if you want to sell your stuff and accept Bitcoin as payment? We can tell you how to make it happen. And how can you become a millionaire and never pay taxes? Well, we can't help you with that one. Sorry, but we can report the latest crypto news and make utter fools of ourselves. That's what you get when you tune in to episode number 30 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition. Who's bad? And welcome, friends, from 150 countries around the world to episode number 30 of the Bad Crypto Podcast, the show for the crypto curious and the crypto serious. Ooh, how you like that one, Mr. Travis Wright? You know, I just want to say that we are, you know, we're now in our 30s, so we're more mature these days. And uh, I think that's a great idea, whatever you just said, Mr. Joel Kahn. I just say, why do you build me up, buttercup? just to let me down why is that song been in your head all day i don't know it's so stuck in my head why do you build me up you know after doing that parody song i'm thinking maybe we should never sing again i'm thinking probably some of our listeners probably think that as well however too bad because when we get our millionth download we will do another song although we don't know what that song is yet and so maybe if you have an idea of what kind of song that could be, maybe give us a title of a parody and maybe we'll uh, we'll think about doing that for our one millionth download celebration. And maybe we'll actually even create some uh, bad coin millionaires on that day. ka baby. It's really funny because people are actually trading bad coin on the BitShares exchange. We've given away, I don't know, something like 160 million or something like that are out there. And there's over 600 people hodling it right now. Some are trading it and we're just going to keep giving it away because we like making bad coin millionaires and just around the corner. Oh, so excited. Bad Cryptober starts with our next episode and if you want to earn so no i don't want to say earn because that means it's a security if you want some free bad coin we're going to open up some more opportunities in bad cryptober and so you're going to want to listen to our next episode which will be number 31 to discover how you can acquire mounds and mounds of bad coin yes it involves letting your friends know about our amazing show that you enjoy so much and so you know share with a friend why not right how to lose friends and not influence anybody <laughs> Uh, we've also got one other change that is coming, and uh, no, it's not Travis's underwear, uh, though hopefully that'll happen someday. I did change those recently. <laughs> Good to know. We're all a fan of, of you doing that. Uh, you know, in a few of our shows, we have spotlighted some ICOs, some companies which we have vetted uh, that we think are doing something really cool in the blockchain space. In fact, we're going to do a whole episode in the future on how blockchain is going to revolutionize and disrupt so many industries. But what we realized is some people want the teaching content that we bring and others want to know know specifically about these new companies. So we're actually going to do episodes that are focused purely on the companies that are doing ICOs, and it's going to be called an ICO spotlight. So watch for one of those coming soon. And that way, if you, you know, if you're not interested in that, it'll be clearly labeled, uh, you know, truth in, in labeling, kind of like you look on the jar and you could see how much salt it has in it. This will be how you can figure out if this is an episode that is on your bucket list. Yeah, it's like, here's a Snickers bar, but this is actually three servings. Why do they do that? It's like, no, it's one Snicker bar. Like, no, it's three servings. No, this is not right. So it's like one episode, but it's actually three servings. It's family size. By the way, I'm Joel Com, and this is Travis Wright. And this is Bad Crypto, and this is episode 30. And you have questions. We have answers. Bad Crypto voicemail. You have one new message. Hey, what's going on, Bad Crypto? I uh, just wanted to let you guys know, utilizing your show and different YouTube videos, I was able to convince my 65-year-old mother to finally invest in Bitcoin. So pretty good feed there. I had a couple questions. 
the first one is what is the most secure way to tuck away my Bitcoin? Uh, and then the next question I had was, uh, how was that debate between Peter Schiff on uh, gold and Bitcoin? Thanks for everything you guys do, and uh, take care. And thank you for the question, nameless listener. Uh, <laughs> we love when we get these voicemails from people and they ask these great questions, but they don't say their name. So you, for all intents and purposes, are John Doe number 32. And actually, you know, I want to say, hey, congratulations to your 65-year-old mom getting up in on some Bitcoin. Nicely done. That's right. She's setting herself up for her retirement. So uh found this great site. You know, in the past, we've talked about different ways to store your Bitcoin and wallets that you can use, but found uh, on the Merkle.com, which is linked in the show notes, they've listed 12 ways that you can store your Bitcoin. And so let's just kind of bounce back and forth on them, Travis. You go, we'll count them down. Number 12, you go first. On the first day of crypto. Oh. <laughs> Travis gave to me Ethereum and some deep sea. Oh, nice. what's deep sea? Yeah. Shout out to Travis Garland. The, a little hint of things to come, perhaps. To come. Right on. So you can store your Bitcoins on an exchange. Maybe not the best idea, but you could do that. Yeah. And the only one that really is that I know of that I would store them on would be Coinbase if you put them into your vault on Coinbase. And we talked a little bit about that in the last episode. Uh, number 11 would be storing your Bitcoins in an online wallet. And uh, there's a number of those wallets online. Some of them include, let's see here, Bread. We talked about that before. Mycelium, Blockchain, Jax. Um, there's a number of others that you can check out there. Yeah, if you use Litecoin, uh, you could put that in the loaf wallet. If you're Bitcoin, then that's the bread wallet, right? There's a nice little carb theme going there. And Dogecoin goes in the Doe wallet. D O U. Doe wallet. Boom. And Ripple, I don't know. It's so different. It's totally different. All right, number ten. Counting down. You could store Bitcoins in a desktop wallet, and there are some various different types of wallets. So. Basically, you just type in the crypto coin that you're using and desktop wallet and Bitcoin desktop wallet. You will find some solutions there. Number nine, number nine, number nine. Store your Bitcoins in a mobile wallet. Hey, hey, honey, can you go ahead and throw some of them their Bitcoins into my mobile wallet? I just want, I like the sound of the jingle jingle they make as I take my phone with me. My mobile, mobile. Yeah, so some of these that we talked about, like Bread Wallet is also a mobile app. And as is Loaf Wallet and Doe Wallet, and um, there's a lot of mobile wallets for both Android and iOS. So just go to your app store on iTunes or go to the Google Play Store and just search for Crypto Wallet or Bitcoin Wallet. And maybe there's a Bagel Wallet. I don't know if that exists or not, but you know you could invent it. Also, what you could do is store Bitcoins on a you know a hardware wallet, right? Sort of offline. Uh, you could use a device such as the Trezor. Was it Le uh, Open Ledger Nano S or whatever? What is that one you have? Ledger Ledger Nano S. Yeah. Although I'm thinking of getting a Trezor also. It's a little pricier, but I think it has more room and is is more rugged. In fact, uh, we'll put a link to the Trezor in the show notes. It kind of sounds like Travis, and so it sounds cooler. Yeah, that must be exactly <laughs> That's what. what. <laughs> As my the hardware wallets are secure. Number seven, store your Bitcoins on a paper wallet. It, it, this is not hard to do. In fact, you can go to BitcoinPaperWallet.com. It shows you exactly how to create one, how to make it fully secure. And you put that paper wallet in your actual wallet, in your purse, carry it with you and be able to transact with Bitcoin in that way. That's such a great idea. Uh, number six, storing Bitcoins on a multi-signature wallet. What is that? Yeah, multi-signature wallet requires multiple people to approve a transaction before it can go through. So oh. maybe a good solution there. So maybe you maybe you can't have your Bitcoin because mom said. And so mom's got to approve it with you. No, I do not approve that Lambo. Not until there's enough Bitcoin to buy one for everybody in the family. I know, I know it's gone to the moon, but you still can't have your Lambo. Number five. Here's what I never thought of. Uh, bury your Bitcoins. 
So, you know, if you're feeling like uh, you really want to put it somewhere safe, you can print out a paper wallet or get one of these hardware wallets and find a hole in the ground and bury that somewhere. And, uh, you know, hopefully the dog doesn't dig it up. Yarg, matey, you could be a crypto pirate. Gar. Gar. You can also store your Bitcoins on your body. So... It may sound weird, but you could tattoo one of those 12-word seeds or those phrases that can help you remember uh, what your Bitcoin code is to get into those different wallets, right? So some of those wallets, they have those 12-word seeds. So you could actually tattoo that into your body. Tattoo that, you. Tattoo you. Or you could maybe take the first letter from each one of those words and then, you know, make a tattoo out of that and then mix it all up and then forget what they are and lose all your coins. So your girlfriend might be like, honey, what's your Bitcoin key? And you'd be like, girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Okay. Number three, <laughs> I amuse myself. If wow. nobody else. Hey, you Aaron, can... Aaron edit, edit that. No, don't edit that. <laughs> Uh, we, have, we have a new producer to the show. Uh, Aaron is uh, uh, the, fortunately the uh, fortunate for us, not so much for him. Is uh, Aaron Tech? Um, that's actually his real name, Tech. Not. Oh my gosh, uh, we have Tech and Com. I know, right? Number three, store bitcoins in your bank. So you can basically create your paper wallet, or you can take your hard wallet and put it in a safety deposit box, which makes it, you know, safe from thieves coming to your house or if there's a fire. And of course, the bank doesn't know what you've got inside your safety deposit box. So that's an option. There you go. And uh, you could also store bitcoins on physical coins. So you've seen how Joel has had this this physical Bitcoin, but you know he doesn't have one of the ones that has that tamper-proof sticker on it. So if you actually have one of those tamper-proof stickers on the coin, you can actually put a predetermined amount of Bitcoin on those coins. So like a lot of those coins will come loaded with a hundred or one hundred and fifty dollars or more of Bitcoin, and so you got to trust the company that's actually issuing those. But uh, you could do that. Get a whole pirate's chest full, matey. Yar, that's right. Captain Jack Sparrow like some of that Bitcoin. Uh, number one way to store your Bitcoin is to put them in plain sight. The Merkle.com talks about steganography, which is not a dinosaur. It is the, or I'm a dinosaur. Steganography is the art of concealing messages or information within other non-secret text or data. For example, they say one could hide a Bitcoin private key in an image or put it on the wall. And, you know, people wouldn't know, you know, if it was just there, if you had notes around your room that were somehow disconnected. Um, and, and what's really funny about this, if you look at the article, they actually hid 0.03 Bitcoin in the article and they had a contest for people to try to figure out how they stored Bitcoin in plain sight. And we'll let you go to the site and send them some traffic since they deserve it to see exactly what the address was. And somebody eventually guessed it and they got 0.03 Bitcoin watching that Bitcoin in plain sight. So there you go. There's 12 different ways to stash your Bitcoin bitcoins and uh, there was a second part to the question and it was about peter schiff and the debate that was going to take place at the nexus earth on gold and bitcoin that was entertaining that was very entertaining and we did have the benefit and pleasure and honor of interviewing uh, peter schiff as well as max kaiser and so uh, we have those those interviews coming up for you in uh, future episodes, as well as the video of the actual debate, which was a riot. So watch for that coming soon. And now let's go to the news, not fake news. And we do have some news you can use for this episode. But first, our first experiment with Travis and Joel selecting a altcoin and investing $100. We did that at the beginning of the month, and now we are prepared to tell you the results of our experiment. Oh, hug me. <laughs> I, it was a hard month, wasn't it? For you. Well, for everybody. 
I mean, we it was it was the beginning of the month that the crash happened. Yeah. And yeah. the bottom fell out on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and, and just about every altcoin really tanked, right? And of course, we're just hodling here. But uh, what coin did you pick? Let's remind our listeners. So we had three to choose from, from that particular episode. And that's what we'll do in the next episode is we'll pick our next three that we are thinking about. And then we'll choose one for you know, the month. And I chose the basic attention token, B-A-T. And the reason I chose that one is because the founders of uh, Firefox and the, uh, I guess the inventor of JavaScript are working together on this platform called Brave. And it's a browser. And it basically has no JavaScript on the browser. It has no way to, you know, add advertising or add any like malware or anything. So Brave Dot com is where you go and download the thing. It's smoking fast. So if you're on a mobile device, man, you should have Brave because it is so, so fast. Like, it's ridiculous. It just blocks all this other stuff you don't need. And so what they're doing is they're saying, hey, instead of doing paid advertising like normally, they're, based, they're creating this basic attention token. And the more attention that certain sites get, they are giving them... Uh, you know, some of the, some of their bat coin and you can buy it and you can use it and donate. You can like tip people on articles and whatnot. So it's kind of a cool, interesting, um, you know, content marketing and content advertising kind of a, kind of a play. So I bought some 0.243 was what I bought it at. And today it is 0.245. Oh, so, you know, hey. There you go. Uh, you are up. Your hundred dollars is now worth what? One hundred and five, hundred and ten. No, hundred. It's worth a hundred dollars and one hundred and one dollars. I think probably less than one hundred one dollars. I'm not sure because I actually bought more than just a hundred dollars worth. But on the hundred dollar investment, you you made about a um, dollar. <laughs> so okay, you make it sound so glamorous. Yeah, well, wait till I tell you what happened to me. Um, I chose District OX. The symbol is DNT, a network of decentralized markets and communities, different districts, as it were. And you guys check out that episode, which was called Crypto Cage Match, Joel versus Travis from September 1st or August 31st, if you want to uh, find out more about it. And District OX was one that got hit really hard with the collapse. It fell as far as about, well, I bought it at 10 cents per uh, token, and it fell as far as 035 during the collapse. I mean, it is just like the bottom fell out today. It is sitting at 0.046029, and which means that my hundred dollars is now worth about $46. So I got clobber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know what I'm going to do? You're going to hodl anyway. I'm, I'm going to hodl it. And eventually I believe that the project is a worthy project, that the price doesn't reflect anything other than when the collapse happened, there's people that panic sell. And I, I got to tell you, just, you know, in, in reference to that, we saw Neo go from 50 to 15. And as of today, it's over $30. Uh, it's coming back. And, you know, while we are not financial advisors and this is the bad crypto podcast and you'd be a fool to listen to any investment <laughs> advice from us, please, you know, consult with a real financial advisor. My personal belief is that when this China stuff finally the dust settles on it, that NEO is going to be really positioned to help dominate in the ICO market in China. Uh, I could be very wrong. It could go to zero, but I'm hodling and that's my personal belief. NEO to zero. I don't think that's going to happen because there was actually news uh, that they've talked about that even if China is becoming regulated, you know, they were working with the Chinese bank, the People's Bank of China, to ensure that they would be within those regulation models anyway. And so I think whenever they turn on those those exchanges and allow ICOs through their new regulations, whenever those happen, I could foresee those uh, increasing in value rather substantially as well. But who knows? We, as you said, are not financial advisors. We don't know nothing. But in as obvious by our September uh, choices. 
<laughs> well, the next episode, we will bring our latest picks to you. And of course, if you have one that you like, feel free to write us at badcryptopodcast at gmail.com. Go to our website at badcryptopodcast.com and click the contact form or join us on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash bad crypto. Are you seeing a theme here? Lots of activity on the bad crypto page and ask to join the bad crypto mastermind because we're seeing some really great content come out of the people who are seriously engaged in discussing this. Now, it was just a couple weeks ago, uh, or actually, yeah, about a couple weeks ago that Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan Chase, said that Bitcoin is a fraud. But now we have the CEO of Morgan Stanley, another uh, big bank, uh, financial institutions say Bitcoin is more than just a fad. This on Coindesk.com for September 27th. James Gorman is his name that he made. Uh, he made these comments to Bloomberg or the Wall Street Journal or both of them. Yeah, it's just it's just a fad, you guys. Um, I'd also like to let you know that you know artificial intelligence, as far as com- computational computing goes, that's also a fad. I would say this 4G LTE stuff, that seems to me to be a fad. What do you think, Joel? That, it, mobile phones, smartphones, those are a fad. Uh, yeah, clearly. I think hula hoops are a fad, too. Oh, wait, yeah. you can still go to the store and buy this. Now, you know, when people start comparing the bubble to tulips, my head wants to explode, right? The tulip bulbs. That's like beans. Remember when Beanie Babies exploded? I do remember when Beanie Babies why in the hell did Beanie Babies explode? That was the weirdest thing ever. It, it, so I was actually, you know, part of that. I remember, you know, my kids were young and we got caught up in the Beanie Baby thing and we drove through McDonald's and got the teeny beanies and we would get the ones the kids wanted, but then we would flip others on eBay. And that purple princess bear, you know, it was a Princess Diane tribute, was going for up to $1,000 in some markets. Now you could probably get one for $4 on eBay. But this is what happens when you put a value on something that really has no value, a a la tulip bulbs, beanie babies. But on the contrary, people are using, companies are building technologies on the blockchain with these currencies that have exchange of real value. And that's why I think the comparison is moot and why I think that uh, James Gorman should teach Mr. Jamie Dimon a thing or two. Uh, It is more than a fad. It's here to stay. And by stay, I mean, it could go to zero. (laughs) And here, here's here's the thing though that I always that I always point out and stress in these situations. Bitcoin may not be the currency that lasts years and years and years, a hundred years down the road. It, it, that may not be the one. No, it's going to be bad coin. It's going to be bad coin, you guys. No, it's it's the blockchain. The blockchain is the thing. That, so if these people think that if Morgan Stanley CEO or I mean the other dude Jamie Dimon thinks that it's a fad, that dude's an idiot because blockchain is not going away, right? Why would you assume the blockchain is going away? It, that just tells me you don't understand. If you say, oh, Bitcoin's a bubble. It doesn't matter if it's a bubble. Blockchain is revolutionizing technology in all of these industries. And for them to say it's a bubble or it's a fad is just ludicrous. You are channeling Max Kaiser. Right I was now. channeling Max Kaiser there. He's my spirit animal. You're, you're getting all up in that mic and, and we're feeling it. It's good, though. So uh, and here's more proof. Um, this news story today, also from Coindesk, is the headline is the U.S. government. Hello, United States government awards seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a new blockchain startup grant. It's for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. DHS and a um, a Virginia based digital bazaar received this three quarters of a million dollar grant to fuel development of fit for purpose blockchains for a number of different use cases. So the government, the U.S. government is getting involved. Yeah. And, you know, this is not the only government worldwide that is actually doing this stuff, right? There's a lot of other initiatives that we've read about recently, like Russia is actually subsidizing Bitcoin mining, the expenses of it, so that way there can be more Bitcoin within their country. Comrade, we will subsidize mining. Here is your pick, your shovel, and computer. Please to go get Bitcoin. Here is your pick and your sickle. 
<laughs> yeah. So that's interesting. And then actually there was there was the other news because it's fascinating to me that Japan is creating their own currency that they're calling the J coin. So different countries are doing different things. They decide, you know, different rules and regulations. Some governments are a little more authoritarian. Some of them like to have a little bit more control. Some of them are a little more, a little more free. Let's dig into that one just a little bit. I just shot you a link to it. It's on businessinsider.com. Uh, and it says a consortium of Japanese banks are going to launch a new national digital currency. And why? To wean citizens off cash. In time for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. And this project, the J-Coin, named after Joel, of course, because it's all about me, yo. The Japan Central Bank and the regulators, they're all on board for this. And they want uh, Japanese people to pay for goods and services with their smartphone using the J-Coin. And it looks like the exchange that they're proposing it is a one-to-one rate with the yen. So basically, a million yen gets you a, a stick of gum, right? Hmm. I'm not sure what the exchange rate is at this very moment. As again, we're not financial advisors. Uh, however, I think it's really fascinating because you know what? The technology boom after World War II, right? What was the dude's name? Edward Deming. He, he has this philosophy of Kaizen, which is constant and never ending improvement. He had worked with a lot of American businesses, but then he went over there to, to Japan, helped rebuild their country through mindset and, and actually giving them these productivity tools. And Kaizen is how a lot of the Japanese are thinking. They're always thinking constant, never any improvement. What can I do to get better? What can we do to get better? And they, they see things sometimes before we do or because before other governments do. And so here they are again. They are going to, launch a, you know, a national cryptocurrency before the Olympics. That is huge. Now, that tells me by 2020, I mean, you know, they were the first they were really they were really up on on texting and they had way faster internet speeds than we did, right? And they so they've always been kind of about they're they're the trendsetters when it comes to a lot of that technology stuff. They were really big fans of the QR code which never really took off here until now when it looks like it may be taking off a little bit more because of uh because of crypto. crypto. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the actual exchange for uh, yen right now, uh, $1 US equals 112 and 45 um, yen. So it's not a million. 112, 45 gets you a pack of gum. So one J coin will be worth about 0. 0. 0.006 or, or seven or something like that. So it'll be less than a, it'll be less than a penny. Math is so fun. I love when you do math or when you attempt to. It's actually point zero zero eight, but you know, move a decimal point here and there. I was ballparking it. Uh, So we've covered the U.S., we've covered Japan, we've covered Russia. Last story, as long as we're going around the world, is uh, this one on Europe. And the president of the European Central Bank has said it would not be within our power to prohibit or regulate. Bitcoin. He, they understand that this thing is now beyond their reach. Bitcoin, blockchain, cryptocurrency has taken on a life of its own. And the more governments work to try to control it, the more the technology will be harnessed by the people who uh, want freedom to say, oh, we will find a way. In fact, I don't actually have the link to the story here, but I did read something and might have put it in our, uh, what do you call it? Our, our, what's our, uh, our, 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 I put the flipboard, our flipboard, which by the way has zillions of flips and, and it's in the show notes. You guys should check it out because it's where we, it's the repository for the stories that end up becoming. We pull from there to decide which stories are important. It's our story suppository. You like yes. the story. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll like it. Now, now nobody's going to want to go there unless you're blocked up, in which case. <laughs> yeah. So the story that I read was how there are people in China that are already creating 
a way to go around the ban should China continue to ban ICOs. And uh, look, I'm all for freedom. I'm all for governments staying out of the people's business and let commerce and capitalism reign because under that style is where we have the most freedom and prosperity. So that's a whole lot of news for you. And now let's go to our very brief feature section. All right. So one of the things that, you know, we've been asked about quite frequently and, you know, how can you actually accept Bitcoin if maybe you're a business? I have an agency in Kansas City. It's called CCP.digital. And we work with a lot of different companies and they said, well, hey, well, this Bitcoin thing you're talking about and this crypto thing. Well, how can we accept Bitcoin payments for our store? And so that is the topic and subject of today's feature. Which is going to be a really short one because I'll tell you the answer. Send me your Bitcoin. That's that's how you do it. So thanks for joining us. For <laughs> <laughs> how do you do it? You send us a Bitcoin. Well, how? Yeah. So then- there's um, we've got several links we're going to put in the show notes for you, so you can do some investigating on this yourself. But really, there's there's two main ways that you can go after this, right? Because the sophistication of the technology now is making it really simple. You know, the easiest way is in person, right? So somebody's there in your store and you and you tell them how much to send to your wallet. And that happens via a smartphone app. And we've talked about all the different types of wallets that you can store on your phone. Uh, and it's really interesting because the article I initially found this on was from late 2015, almost two years ago. And Apple actually at one point had banned, they removed all the Bitcoin wallet apps from their store. But then they change their policy as Apple does. Now there's tons of wallet apps. So if you as a merchant have any wallet at all that, you know, you have an address and somebody can scan your QR code, they can send you instantly right there at the counter the amount of Bitcoin or whatever wallet you're dealing with that is required for the transaction. That is correct. So again, merchant, Bitcoin, point of sale solutions, that actually works. One thing I would probably say before that even is maybe start with a sign. Let people know that Bitcoin is accepted here because if you expect a number of people to start using uh, Bitcoin within your business, you need to let people know that you do indeed accept Bitcoin. So that might be one thing you want to do. You want to increase awareness. Maybe let your customers know that you do now accept Bitcoin as a payment. And uh, there's a lot of other different ways. So you have the merchant point of sale system. You know, there's also Coinbase even has a, a payment processor that's built in with their point of sale app. They have one of those. There's a there's a company like BitPay is another one that allows that. There are a few other ones. There's another one that's actually based out of uh, Denver. Uh, it's called Crypto Wampum, and they allow you to do some, some uh, cryptocurrency point of sale solutions as well. It uh, looks like there's more of them that are popping up, Joel. Yeah, there, there's a bunch of them. And, and rather than go into it, I think what we really want to communicate is that this is not difficult to do. Once you have a wallet of any kind, it's easy to accept Bitcoin. But take a look through, if you're a merchant, you have a shop, and you want to accept some of these, look through some of these um, options that are available. Pay stand. For example, they're a processor based out of California, and they give you, if you have a website or mobile applications, you can accept payments such as not just credit cards and e-checks, but also Bitcoin, and they help you to do that. Coin of sale is another one. XB Terminal. There's a lot of different ways to go at this. And again, there's a bunch in the show notes you can check out. But what's really important is that you do notify your uh, customers that you accept Bitcoin. There's, you know, images that are going around that say Bitcoin accepted here with the little, you know, coin on it. So people instantly know, you know, uh, it was last at last episode, I mentioned that I saw on the counter in Prague at the Apple Museum, a Bitcoin and a Litecoin logo. And had I had my wallet at the ready, I would have paid for entry. For the first time, I would have spent my Bitcoin uh, for a practical purpose. And I wasn't at the ready didn't have the wallet, wasn't online, but I now have the wallets downloaded and will be ready because if for no other reason, I think there's an empowerment in doing a transaction 
with cryptocurrency. I think, you know, have you done that yet, Travis? I have, yeah. Actually, I spent some Bitcoin and uh, bought a hotel room when I went to Cleveland for the Content Marketing uh, World Conference. Uh, I was there for a couple of days and I said, you know what? I can do it. And so you can do that with uh, Expedia, I believe, is the site that, yeah, it was Expedia. Uh, you can basically do that with them, buy some, buy your hotel room. And then I was thinking, well, damn, in 10 years from now, that hotel room probably is going to cost, probably cost me, you know, a, few, a couple hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Well, there's, there's other creative ways to let people know that you accept Bitcoin if you do have a retail shop. And this article we'll put in the show notes links to, for example, CocoMatsAndMore.com. They actually have doormats that have Bitcoin accepted here on them. So as people are walking into the front step, you know, and into your doorway, they can see. And that's going to, you know, that's part of spreading the word, right? People who don't know that haven't gone down the rabbit hole yet, the more they see in store windows and on menus and on doormats and at counters, Bitcoin accepted here, the more they're going to realize that, hey, this is legitimate. This this thing that I've heard about that I thought was for criminals, mm -hmm. they're, they actually take it at the store. And, you know, repetition is what's going to make people pay attention. And again, you folks are the pioneers. You are the early adopters. The mainstream has yet to arrive. And I can't tell you exactly when that's going to begin happening. I would say Thursday, likely Thursday. <laughs> at 3 p.m. Yeah. Uh, my, my personal belief is when Amazon announces that they're taking crypto, that's when the masses will really start to pay attention. But this is a slow burner. You know, I was doing websites in 1995 and those that were building them really up to the year 2000, 2001 would be considered the early adopters. We didn't really hit the mainstream until, you know, 2004, 2005. And there are still some people that don't have a website yet, right? There's still businesses that don't have a Facebook page. So this uh, cryptocurrency is a slow burner and it's going to take time to really get the masses in. But, you know, when you think how many people there are in the world that aren't using it, they are the great majority. We're, what would you say of people in the free world? Would you say that 1% are using, you know, have crypto at all? Is it is that number even too large? You know, it's really hard to tell. I mean, I don't know if we've mentioned this or not, but we're not financial advisors, or, <laughs> or nor do I, nor do I have a crystal ball. I I would have, I would assume that way less than one percent of the people have this thing so far. Um, you know, I'm just I'm actually searching right now to see you know how many Maybe people we're, we're actually the one percent now, which is great. Actually, oh, finally. Finally. So, uh, you know, you guys can do some research on this and maybe report back to us on our page. But I found an article from three years ago. And at that point, it said at most two and a half million people in the world owned bitcoins. And about half of those were what we would call dust, like 0.001. And so this article ran some calculations based on transactions and IPs. And at that point, three years ago, they speculated that maybe 1.2 million addresses held uh, in, in anything at all worth any quantity. So at that point, only 97 addresses had a balance of over 10,000 Bitcoins. So, you know, at least one of them was probably Satoshi Nakamoto. I'm going to do a little research on this and see if we can discover just how prevalent, how many people there are that are holding Bitcoin. So uh, if you're a merchant, start to accepting Bitcoin. And you don't have to huddle it if you don't want to. You can go ahead and sell it. You know, uh, Overstock.com, for example, we, you know, we've got an interview coming up with Patrick Byrne, the CEO of Overstock. And what he said, here's a teaser from that interview, is they hodl 50% of the Bitcoin they get and the other 50% is converted to fiat in within 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I just did some research here and it said this was in May, but they said that there was about 3 million cryptocurrency users worldwide, not just Bitcoin, but all of them combined. And so 
That's pretty wild. There's there's 320 million people in the United States of America, you know, hundreds of millions more in Europe, and then you know we go to the other continents in the world, in Asia, and in you know Africa and South America, and uh, I still think we are just at the beginning of this. So be excited. Join our community at facebook.com forward slash bad crypto and call us with your questions or just your comments or just to say stay bad at our Google voicemail, which is 708-885-9030. And don't be afraid just to, you know, message us, give us a tip, give us a question. And I do have a tip for you. If you decide to ramble on for the whole three minutes of this and is on, I, I we lose interest after about a minute. So if you could actually like keep your question down to about a minute, that would be great. That will ensure you actually get listened to because there's been there's been some people who've called in, rambled on for three minutes, then called again, rambled on for another three minutes. That's a lot. Keep it keep it around a minute, minute and a half most. Ain't nobody got time for that. So my friends, stay thirsty and stay bad. The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto, LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoins and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.